Hello, welcome back to the place where you get a chance to build your mental might. Here in this series where we're working on critical thinking, looking to supplant lazy thinking with some techniques and some reminders about how to build that muscle. I'm doing this for myself as much as I'm doing it for anyone else. And I sure am having a good time. I'm challenging my own thinking, trying to expand the way I look at situations and evaluate information. And today I just want to do a shout out to the people who have a natural tendency to play devil's advocate. I think you're doing something really, really important, something that the rest of us could learn from. Unfortunately, people who have a tendency to do this sometimes get looked at as if they are contrarians or troublemakers or just um, uh, stirring the pot. And maybe they are. And maybe that's the point. Maybe that's what we could all be doing a better job with. Because you know what those folks who are playing devil's advocate do for the rest of us? It's pretty awesome. They cause us to pause and think about something from another perspective. They force us to look at the what if scenario, the one that we might have glossed over and really regretted later that we didn't consider. When they ask us those those questions that cause us to take a detour and to look at something from another angle, sure, we could be a little annoyed because it takes more time to do that, or we could be a little disappointed because we didn't just immediately have harmonious acceptance of, of the idea or the thought. But... The time we might save now by discussing the issue from this other perspective could be a lot more time saved later when we don't have to go back and re-examine and do rework and fix problems that could have been avoided if we'd have just taken this moment to think it through. I think that there ought to be a devil's advocate in every meeting. And I kind of like the notion where a team appoints someone different to be the devil's advocate in every meeting, or at least with every decision that's being made. Because when you are thrust into that role, when people are expecting you to be the devil's advocate, and they're giving you permission, and they're relying on you to to ask thought-provoking questions, it builds up your tolerance for for being that person and for, for doing that work. And you have an opportunity to appreciate the person who does it a little more often because it comes really naturally to them. I think it's good practice. Even if you're working independently, it's really good practice to take a deep breath, to get objective, and to analyze the work that you're doing, the decisions that you're making, the conclusions that you're drawing by playing devil's advocate. Asking the questions, what if, why, why not, how do I know, what else is out there? Just pushing, pushing yourself to consider something you otherwise might not consider. And this is a departure from what we normally do. See, normally, because of confirmation bias, we deny the existence of or the validity of other information that's out there, the information that doesn't fit our preconceived ideas. So when you're a devil's advocate, you're also helping yourself escape from that decision trap of confirmation bias. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. And please, if you ever see me going down the road where I need a devil's advocate, you have an open invitation to pose a provocative question for me. I might not like it in the moment, but I promise that I'll appreciate it in the long run.